the difference is so for me like i said personally i've just it's uh there's maybe a little bit too much cut on that but it's but flipping heck it doesn't half fire out i'll tell you that's gone a long way right thank you for joining the average golfer i'm at amanduera a golf club over in portugal and i've got some fair weather testing to be done i've got the maverick clubs in hand it's a return of the supercomputer bigger better than ever before callaway say question is what does the average golfer say on course testing then we'll finish with some dry ball data and i'll give you my evaluation <laughs> Right, so before we go any further, let's just very briefly, and I mean briefly, because I'm all about the testing, let's talk about how they look, uh, and your opinions down below. Because for me, I mean, I'm looking down at them, I'm not overly impressed by the looks of them, and they don't seem to have gone great in terms of the design. Uh, but anyway, that aside from the top end, they look superb. But we've got two very different drivers and how they appear at address, two very different shapes, as you can see, and aimed at two possibly very different golfer as well. But we're gonna put them to the test, but before we do that, we're going to have to shoot just back to the UK for a short while and I'm going to give you the tech spec. What's a supercomputer done and how's that going to help average golfers? Yes, it's back to the cold of the UK, but it's a gorgeous day. I'm at Conway Golf Club. I'm going to quickly tell you about what uh, technology is packed into these drivers from Callaway. And it's back to the story of AI, artificial intelligence. The supercomputer has just got bigger and better. At least that's what Callaway is saying. And they very much designed some very bespoke products. So each of the products is very differently designed, both in the body and in the face as well, on each of the three drivers that I've at least seen uh, in this Maverick range. We're looking today at the Maverick and the Sub-Zero. And what they've done basically in the Maverick, which I think the standard product is going to be the big seller and the big changer in terms of technology, is Callaway saying that there's always been a trade-off to be made in that low spinning drivers were often uh, not very forgiving and uh, your cg back in terms of your forgiving driver would often have a little bit of a compromise in terms of ball speeds what they've done with this new shape and what artificial intelligence has done is designed a club head that doesn't compromise those two things so we're getting a very forgiving driver and fast ball speeds and also one that is very much aerodynamic and you'll see the difference in change of shape more notable in any than in the Maverick standard product. And if you see that epic flash body that you see compared to it, it is a big change in terms of how it looks. You then go into the face design. And again, this is where artificial intelligence has had a big impact. This is Flash Face SS20. Uh, it's a titanium face. It again, is something that is um, very much bespoke for each of the club heads. They vary so much. And if you have a look at the heat map, I've got all three products in front of you now, but if you have a look at the heat map there, that's the variable thicknesses on the face and they do change for each of the faces. And what Callaway are basically saying, they're optimizing body shape, face type thicknesses to optimize performance in each of the club heads and what each of us are looking for. So it's very much, like I said, club heads designed for different individuals, different club types of swing, different uh, club head speed swing speeds and I like it it's a good good story and artificial intelligence is apparently doing things that humans would take literally years to conclude and artificial intelligence is moving Callaway a way way forward they reckon but let's see how it performs in the hands of the average golfer eh the difference is so for me like I said personally I've just it's uh there's maybe a little bit too much cut on that, but it's but flipping heck, it doesn't half fire out. I'll tell you, that's gone a long way. Uh, a little bit too much cut, uh, slightly left to right, but it's something that I couldn't do with the uh, draw bias max driver. I pretty much tried to play the same shot 
uh, that you've just seen. And again, for me, this one sits in a much more neutral position. Um, it's a different ball flight as well. Uh, for me personally, I'm still getting a much more a penetrating ball flight and much more what I'd be looking for from a driver. But again, both the faces certainly have got a heck of a lot of power coming out of them. And one thing they've done incredibly well, and we talked about it earlier in terms of the um, acoustics, what they've done inside of that club uh, to make this a softer, sweeter sound. And for me, it's bang on the button in terms of that. I love it. I love the drivers, I've got to say. They're very, very impressed. Oh. Do you know what? There's not a lot more to be said. I mean, you pick the ball flight up. It's very high, obviously, coming from this elevated sea. It's probably finished in, uh, in right bunker, but uh, I just... Well, I'm, I'm so impressed with these, and I don't think there's no more to be said. I'm gonna, uh, the, off, the on-course testing has been, uh, has been finished. I've uh, done pretty well off the tee from my perspective, and I think the big deal is you always look at these from the perspective of an average golfer. Are you going to like these clubs? And I think, yes, I think Callaway have got a club on their hands that's uh, going to be a big, big seller for them in terms of this range. Uh, but let's go and have a look at some dry ball data and uh, then do a final evaluation. Back in the UK, back in the cold. So yeah, back to me in the cold of the UK to just finish off with some dry ball data. And it's for the Maverick driver, like I said. Of, uh, the the Sub-Zero has always been a product that's it's not for me. I don't produce the swing speed that it relates to. So I think let's have a look at the numbers that specifically relate to me. And they were pretty much bang on the button, sort of. I think it's, what is it, 246? You've got them in front of you now. I can't remember them. 246, 247. Carry, 2,500 spin, launching around the 12 mark and 148 ball speeds off a kind of 97, 98 mile an hour club head speed, which is right bang on the button for me. It, what it didn't do, it's not done anything major in terms of dry ball data, uh, anything better than what I've achieved before in terms of dry ball data, that is. But the numbers are very, very good, and there was a good consistency across the, uh, across the performance, and that suggests to me that the club face is doing what it says, which is producing ball speeds across the club face. But always the ultimate kind of thing is for me is for out on the golf course how it does it before. It performs very, very well indeed. It's a very unique sound and feel. They've changed quite a lot. And I think it's going to be, and it's different to all the drivers that I've tested as well so far this year. So I think they're the kind of things that are going to, are they going to appeal to you? But the biggest thing Callaway have done is make a range of product that is very much bespoke to the individual swing and it could be a big change in the way we see things moving forward this year uh, or in future years that is right as ever thank you for watching both here and over at Amanduera thanks to Amanduera for having me thanks for Conway Golf Club for having me and uh, I'll carry on doing some more testing out here in reality and uh, I'll see you all soon